It was a hard hit. It was very, uh, I guess you would say surreal, but it wasn't surreal. You know, I was telling somebody you have instances like this or like a lot less than this, where you feel it's a surreal situation. And I never felt that way. I knew immediately that it was a bullet. I knew immediately that it was at the ear. During his interview with Elon Musk on Monday night, Donald Trump sounded like he had a lisp and was slurring at points. In fact, he sounded so unusual that even Trump himself has stated his voice was strange. However, Trump is blaming technology for the issue. He wrote on Truth Social, my conversation with Elon last night was heard by a record audience and was really something special as Elon himself is very special. And I thank him for such a strong endorsement. Unfortunately, because of the complexity of modern day equipment and cell phone technology, my voice was in certain areas somewhat different and strange. Therefore, we have put out an actual and perfect recording of the conversation. Enjoy. Now listen closely because we're gonna play the original recording once more and then immediately after we'll play Trump saying the same thing, but this time from his actual and perfect recording. Take a look. It was a hard hit. It was very, uh, I guess you would say surreal, but it wasn't surreal. You know, I was telling somebody you have instances like this or like a lot less than this where you feel it's a surreal situation. And I never felt that way. I knew immediately that it was a bullet. I knew immediately that it was at the ear. It was a hard hit. It was very, uh, I guess you would say surreal, but it wasn't surreal. You know, I was telling somebody you have instances like this or like a lot less than this where you feel it's a surreal situation. And I never felt that way. I knew immediately that it was a bullet. I knew immediately that it was at the ear. But Trump didn't just blame technology, he also blamed reporters. S.V. Date, who's a White House correspondent at HuffPost, wrote on X that when he asked about the, the voice and the slurring to the Trump campaign, they responded, must be your blank hearing, get your ears checked. John, um, I mean, it's, it did sound a little different in the perfect mm. recording, but the S's still sounded exaggerated. And I know this isn't the biggest deal, but what do you make of him focusing on this so much, going to great lengths mm -hmm. to publish this perfect audio to dispel this narrative? I think, um, look, it's a it's an issue that is utterly irrelevant substantively, but if you needed to know who Trump is and all of his weaknesses and hangups, this reveals like all of them simultaneously. Um, I also love that they were so mad at the reporter. Well, apparently the reporter had heard accurately that that damn tech screwed his voice up. You should be thanking him so that you could release your perfect audio or whatever. Um, also, like, can we just briefly mention that the the audio sample that they're using is of him talking about when he got his little uh, ear scratch or whatever. And I just think it's so funny that at the RNC he said, I'm gonna tell you about it now and you'll never hear about it again because it's honestly too painful. The dude has not stopped talking about it since then. Everywhere he goes, he's talking about it. the same anecdotes over and over and over and over. But anyway, um, the reason that this matters to me is his voice was slurred. He had a lisp or whatever. I don't. I don't think he developed a physical lisp at like a late stage in his life. I think his dentures were falling out. I think that that's what was going on. The issue for Donald Trump is he doesn't have the minimal testicular fortitude to just say that's what happened. So he has to craft some massive cover story in the same way that he can't just be like, well, right now everybody's super excited about Kamala Harris, so she's generating big crowds. But don't worry, in a month I'll have big crowds too. He has to come up with this AI cover story. And Elon Musk couldn't get the stream to work. Tech is complicated, it just didn't work, but he has to come up with a DDoS attack cover story. It's because all of them are tiny, little, fragile, broken baby boys who can't admit their failings or their weaknesses or a mistake even, like a tiny little mistake. And for these guys, I'm not like asking them to be men in a healthy fashion. I know that's never gonna happen, but they can't even be the sort of stereotypical old school toxic man. They have to be like tiny, cowering, whining, 
like coming, like everybody, you have to believe this little cover story because I can't admit that something went wrong. It's so utterly pathetic. And so again, no substance here really. It doesn't matter that his voice was slurring or whatever. It certainly doesn't matter in comparison to the massive cognitive issues that he's showcasing every time he speaks. But in terms of his character and in terms of his emotional and psychological hangups, I do think that this says a lot. Yeah. So <laughs> We 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 talked about this on my podcast last night. We were getting a kick out of the DDoS attack because that's not what a DDoS attack looks like, right? You referenced it. It's obviously BS. It would wipe out the whole site. Like the whole site would be down, mm-hmm. not one function. And because they're so fragile, because they're so unable to admit they just made a mistake, he has to spin it into some nefarious attack on the site. He could have just said, oh my God. So many of you want to hear this conversation with Donald Trump that our servers can't even handle it. Spin it as a good thing. But they are so clouded by their ego, by their narcissism, both of them, in both of these situations, they can't do that. They, he has to spin it into some ridiculous, obvious lie. You, you had it right there on a silver platter. Oh my God, traffic is all the way up. We're seeing record yep. days and our site is, is buckling. We'll be right back. That's it. Spin it as a good thing, but they can't do it. It's just the fragility is so interesting to me. And I, mm-hmm. I it seems prevalent among billionaires and alleged billionaires. Um, I, I don't know. I just, there's a sickness in their head that just turns them into just total psychos. And, and what, like, look, the, the fact that these billionaires are driven by a need for approval, a need for applause, like a hole that can't be filled in their chest is not surprising. I think that that drives a lot of incredibly wealthy people. And the fact that you would have either Donald Trump or Elon Musk basically like forcing the people around them to deal with their emotional hangups and baggage, again, not surprising. I expect that that's probably the standard for a lot of them. But the issue is that they had to like pull all of us into it by like running for president and taking over the Republican Party or buying Twitter or whatever. And all of that would be fine, except that they're not the only ones with an issue. There are millions and millions of Americans, probably 90% of them being men, who see all of this and can't tell it for what it is like they they don't they don't get that this is a guy who is deeply anxious and is constantly afraid of appearing weak or appearing incompetent or appear, appearing stupid and can't admit it like they don't they can't get that and that i think is a bigger societal problem that elon musk will do like the attack or then he'll come out the day later a day later and say you know, with the views and with subsequent conversation, it's a million, it's a billion views. That is so like if your friend said that about something they did, like the rest of you would mock them behind their back, you know? But like when it comes to these guys, they're like, no, he's a genius. He's nailed it. I want to be this guy. I'm gonna reply to every tweet that this guy puts out. And that is a massive problem because it's not a problem of one man, it's a problem of a generation of broken men.